What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So as you might know, there are still some Black Friday and Cyber Monday sales going on. One of those is the Flex Tools sale. So I will link to this page in the notes down below, but I've got this kind of cool landing page and it's got a cool graphic on it that I thought that we could use uh, match photo and flex tools in order to kind of match up with. We may not do the full thing, but we'll do a little bit in order to create a 3D model using this background image. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this image in. I wish it was a little bit lighter, but obviously the purpose of the image is so that you can see the text on it about the sale. But let's go ahead and let's bring it in anyway. So I'm just gonna take a quick screen cap of that. And then I'm just gonna save it and we'll import it into SketchUp. So remember to do this, we can just do a file import. And we want to go to all supported image types and find that image. And we want to bring it in as a new match photo. So make sure that you click on this and we're just going to double click on this image to match. So this is going to bring this into the match photo um, interface. And so what we want to do is let's go ahead and match up our perspective lines on this photo. So I'm just going to align the greens to the perspective lines running this way. I'm going to match the reds up to the perspective lines running this way. You know, we're gonna kind of zoom in just to make sure everything's aligned properly. So I'm gonna get these pretty close. So I think that's pretty close, but I wanna go ahead and I wanna move my blue axis. We'll say, for now, I'm gonna start right here. So I'm basically aligning my blue axis with this corner. And notice how the scale is way off. So you can see how my person model needs to be way smaller. So we can just click and drag this down until our person model is more the correct size. So now, I think that got us pretty close. So let's go ahead and let's finish this photo. So we're just gonna go over to match photo. We're just gonna click on done. So now, I can come in here and I can start drawing a shape, right? So for example, I can draw a rectangle right here that makes up this face of the building. I'm just gonna push pull this down and notice how this is kind of matching up with the perspective right here. And so then let's kind of rotate down so that we can pick up this face. I'm gonna tap the P key to go to push pull mode and I'm gonna tap control and I'm gonna click back on my image to match view. That's gonna bring me back into match photo. I can kind of push pull this down a little bit. So what this is gonna allow me to do is this is gonna allow me to now create a face that kind of aligns with the face over here, right? Because you can see that what's happening here is there's a little bit of an inset on our building. So now we're just gonna draw a line that kind of aligns with this face. So with the corner right here, we're kind of taking our best guess at the moment, that's okay. Um, go ahead and draw a line right here and then I'll continue this up in this face. Then we can just push pull this all the way across. And let's find out the distance that this was in. So in this case, this is nine and seven eighths inches, obviously probably not correct, but that's okay. So we're gonna do nine space, seven eighths of an inch, whoops. Negative nine, seven eighths of an inch on the opposite side. Ugh. So we'll push pull that in over here. So now we have our simple shape, right? We can go back to our image. And so now what I wanna do is I wanna offset this in a little bit. So I'm just gonna tap the F key. I'm gonna offset this in until it aligns with the bottom of this shape right here. Then I'm gonna take this line, I'm just gonna move it across like this. So then I'm gonna offset it in again to align in with this image. And we'll push pull this in until it aligns with this face right here. And this face, I'll offset in a little bit. I'm just basically making this a line over here. I don't care if everything is perfect for this particular exercise. And so now, I think we're fairly ready to start adding our flex tools objects, right? So you've got a big louver on the front of this object. So what we wanna do is we just wanna add a flex slat component. So I'm just gonna click on this, move over my face, I'm just gonna click right here. And notice how this is really small, but we can use the scale function in order to scale this up and down to resize it. So what I can do 
is I can resize this so that it matches what's shown on this face. And so notice how right now this has way too many louvers in it. Well, we can just right click in here and use the um, dynamic components functionality of flex tools in order to adjust the number of slats in here. So at the moment, for example, these slats are spaced at one and a half inches. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna set my spacing to more like 12 inches. I'm gonna click on apply. So you can see how that gives me a lot larger spacing between my slats. Well, now let's make our slats bigger. So we're gonna set our slat width to maybe something like six inches for right now and click on apply. And then let's do the same thing with our slat, but we'll set our, our depth, but we'll set our depth to something like 12 inches. 12 inches is too thick, maybe like two inches. So notice how you can also adjust the rotation in here. So we'll set this to negative 45 degrees. And so what that allowed us to do is that allowed us to create these big slats that fit inside of this opening right here. So now let's do something similar down here. And one thing that's cool about this is notice that this is basically creating the opening in your face right here. Notice it is cutting this all the way through. We can adjust that by going into the wall cutter and just setting our cut depth to one face instead of two. So that way it's not cutting this all the way through. But now let's do the same thing over here. So we're gonna add a flex slap right here. For this one, you can see how that actually aligned with our face automatically. That's pretty cool. That means we don't have to go in here and make any big changes to that. We're just gonna scale this up so that it's a big slap like this. And so for this one, it doesn't really seem to be cutting the face the same way. So I'm just gonna delete this face out. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're going to set our rotation on this one to, we'll call it negative 45 degrees again. So we're gonna apply this. So now we've got our louver down here to match our louver that's up here. Well, now let's do the same thing on this face right here, but now we need to add our glass. So our glass, we probably want to add a flex window in this space. So we're just going to click on this, go to flex window, and we're going to click on this corner right here. And so that should automatically cut an opening. And so dynamic component cutting functionality can get a little bit weird. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna double click and group this like this. Then I'll double click inside of it and I'm gonna place my window inside of the group. So I'm just gonna place a flex window in here. You can see how that's gonna automatically cut an opening in this face. Well, now we can scale it out. We can make this window into something that isn't necessarily a big like window with a sill, like it's showing right now, we can use this to create more of like a storefront window. So the way we're gonna do that is we're going to scale this up. So we're gonna scale it up. And then now let's make some more changes. So first thing, we don't need a sill, right? So we're gonna turn our sill values to zero in the component. So now this no longer has a sill inside of it. Mm. But what it's doing is it's giving us some extra depth that we don't necessarily want. So we're just gonna select it again. And in this case, let's give it a depth of, we'll give our wall thickness a thickness of zero because we just want it to sit on the edge right here. But the other thing we wanna do is we wanna set this so that our spacing gives us all of these different mullions, right? Well, you can do that by adjusting the horizontal and vertical distributions. So in this case, for example, or divisions. So for this one, you've got one, two, three divisions. So we're gonna switch this to three. I think I may need to switch it to a little bit more. Yeah, let's go with four. We'll apply that. So you can see how this is kind of aligning with our mullions right here. And then for the other direction, you've got, let's try 10. Click on apply. It's gonna be more than 10, maybe 12. We can go with 16 for right now. And then you could also come in here and adjust 
the thickness of your profiles. So like for example, let's say I wanted these to be a little bit wider. I could set these to be maybe like two inches wide and two inches wide. And that's gonna make these profiles a little bit wider. You could make them even more if you wanted to. So maybe like six inches and six inches. See how those got bigger in here? So now you've got your glass inside of your object, right? So what we need to do now is we just need to add all of these vertical pieces that are in here that are kind of over the face. So the way that we could do that is let's just draw a face over top of this. So I'm just going to draw a face from this corner to this corner right here. And we'll go back in here and we'll just trace over these vertical pieces. They don't need to be exact. And I'm probably going to turn that flex window off actually that's in the background in the meantime so I'm not accidentally like inferencing to that over and over again. So I'm just going to hide that and then real quick we'll just come in here and we'll just draw some of these objects. One thing that might be helpful is it might be helpful to click on this face and then within this face click on the button for project textures from photos and it's going to ask if we want to trim partially visible faces. Uh, that's fine. So now if I rotate across you can see how this actually applied that as a texture to this face. But now I can just come in here and just kind of trace these out. All right, so now if we go back into match photo mode, you can push pull these out, right? So let's say for example let's get our length so if we were to push pull this one it looks like these have a depth of we'll call it we'll call it 10 inches so I'm just gonna push pull this out 10 inches and then I'm just gonna go through and I'm gonna double click on these notice how the push pull tool retains the last depth that you extruded something to so if you double click what it's gonna do is it's just gonna go back in and just push pull them by whatever that last length was. So I'm gonna go through and push pull everything real quick. Uh, one thing that we may wanna do is now, we can take this whole thing, we can just apply the default material to it so that we can actually see what we're doing again. So then, we can also delete out these other faces because we don't need them anymore. So I'm also, and I probably should have done this before, but we can go ahead and fix it now. I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna look at this from the front side. I'm gonna select all of this geometry, less these faces, and these edges. And I'm gonna put these in a group. So now we can do an edit, unhide, all. We're going to turn x-ray mode off. You can see how now what we have is we have our building right here with the glass kind of like what's shown on this Flex Tools advertisement. So then let's say that we want to duplicate all of this, right? If we wanted this face to be exactly the same, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to View, Parallel Projection. I'm going to go to this front view again. You can turn on x-ray mode if you want, but I'm just gonna pick up all of the geometry that made up this face. I'm just gonna use the move tool in copy mode. I'm gonna copy it all. So I'm gonna copy everything over here. Then I'm gonna use the scale tool to flip it. So I'm gonna scale it to negative one. We're gonna temporarily disable this warning. And we're just gonna take, we're gonna delete this face right here. And take this whole thing and we'll just move it in place. So the one thing it didn't like about this is that because we move this over, the wall cutter geometry isn't working quite right. So we're just gonna select our glass, click on wall cutter, and we'll just adjust our cut depth to one face like this. And now we're looking good.
So if we go back to this view, rotate out of this, we've got the flex tools building right here. You may need to do the same thing on this other side. Um, the way that I did that makes everything a little bit funky. So, but there, now everything seems to be working the way that it should be working. So, and then the last thing we could do, and this gets a little bit tricky, but not too bad, is we could also come in here and just create some circles. And then all I'm going to do is we're just going to cheat a little bit. We're just going to push pull this up right here. I'm going to turn on x-ray mode. I'll just use the move tool to move it over. Notice how the move tool doesn't want to move this. So you're probably going to have to tap like the left arrow key in order to force this to move along that green axis. So you can tap that left arrow key and then very carefully move your object over. And you may want to think about grouping these whenever you do this, just so that they're not all merging with each other. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in a group and then extrude it up just so it's not merging with any of that geometry. We'll do that with all of these. All right, so now, if we rotate out of this and turn off x-ray mode, <clears throat> you can see how we've got a pretty good approximation of the way that that uh, Flex Tools building looks inside of that image. So one of the cool things about this is I probably spent the least amount of time getting the windows and louvers set up, which is something we would have wasted a ton of time on otherwise. So that's one of the things I really like about Flex Tools. If you do want to check that out, you can check it out at the link in the notes down below. It's 30% off for a couple more days. So if you want to check that out, you can do that at the link in the notes below. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Did you like this? Would you like to see it continue further? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, Video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.